Good morning, Honey Rich. Today we'll be looking at Psalm 138, Strength for the Soul, I titled it. It's a short and simple poem famous for some amazing sayings, like, you embolden my soul, or he will fulfill his purpose for me, and even, do not abandon the work of your hands. This is a very practical, a very down-to-earth psalm in which David expresses his confidence in the Lord. Let us first read Psalm 138 in the ESV. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name. For your steadfast love and your faithfulness, for you have exalted above all things your name and your words. On the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul, you increased. All the kings of the earth shall give thanks to you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth, and they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. For great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. This special poem is a nice example of true biblical spirituality. It is a pattern for personal prayer we could easily follow in our own prayers as well. One can use these very words in our prayers, praying them after David. These words are timeless. As relevant as ever. Praying the word gives us vocabulary for our praises, for our petitions. And this psalm is a superb example for this. The division of the different stanzas in this psalm is straightforward. The first stanza, verses 1 to 3, David is thanking God for who he is. In the second stanza, verses five and four and five, the nations are also praising the Lord, will also praise the Lord. The third stanza, verses six to eight, David expresses his personal confidence by testifying how the Lord has helped him. And then the psalm ends with one single petition at the very end. David starts the psalm with the thanking of God, worshipping him for who he is, expressing the characteristics of his name. This is his custom elsewhere in the psalms as well. It is like the Lord's Prayer, where our Lord teaches us to start with our Father, then moving on to his holiness, and then his kingdom, and the will, his will in heaven and on earth. And only then the petitions. This is praise on the basis of God's name, his character, who he is in himself. This is where David starts. And what a good place for us to start as well. And the result in verse 3 is an emboldened soul. You increase the strength of my soul, David testifies. And I pray you answer. What a testimony. No wonder after dwelling on the greatness of the Lord, he feels strengthened and emboldened. Then, in the second stanza, David moves on to an even wider perspective, instead of just moving on to petitions. This time, the Lord being glorified by the nations. David talks about the Kings of the nations who will also come and thank the Lord and sing of his ways because they will have heard his words 
and have known about his greatness. This is gospel language through and through. Even then in the Old Testament, David had a heart for missions, a heart for the nations. Because this is what missions is all about. That the nations will worship him. What a faith builder to look away from ourselves to the greatness of God and the greatness of his ways among the nations. And then in the last stanza, instead of petitions again, what does David do? He starts again with the Lord. He testifies about his confidence in the Lord's dealings with him personally. He starts with the exaltedness of the Lord. That the Lord is exalted means that he is ultimately the highest honor and the highest authority there is. He has the final word. He has the last word. What he says goes. As in the popular hill song, worship song, he has no equal. He has no rival. The Lord highly exalted, but at the same time seeing the lowly. And remember, David was a king and a very successful and powerful one at that. The most important king Israel ever had. But he sees himself as lowly. One cannot otherwise when you compare yourself with the exalted one. This is our problem with our pride, isn't it? We ignore to see the exaltedness of the Lord and then become big in our own eyes. This is bad for confidence. This is bad for real faith. Not so, King David. He does not compare himself with others, with other people. He compares himself with God. There is where his humility came from. What a God-centered prayer life he had. Then David proceeds to celebrate the Lord's dealings with him, giving testimony of the past. Not only preserving his life in troubles, but also delivering him from his deadly enemies, of which he had many. And here is this wonderful phrase again, saving me. The saving, which does not mean eternal salvation in the first place, but being restored, by being refreshed, by, by things being put right again, like health or justice or protection or victory over enemies and obstacles, even in this life. David flows over sheer confidence, confidence, confidence. This is what we get when we start with God. Verse 8 then has these famous words. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Because it is, he is eternally loyal and committed, committed to me because of his unfaithful love, his steadfast love to me. Whatever my needs, my petitions may be, in the end God's purpose for me will prevail. No wonder David bursts out in thanks in verse 3 that the Lord has made him bold, that he has strengthened his confidence. What a faith builder that we can know the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me, regardless anything. The psalm then ends with the only petition, the only request in this old psalm, where David asked, do not abandon the work of your hands. The work of your hands first and foremost refer to his kingdom over Israel, of course, the covenant people, God's dealings with them, but also himself personally. So even in his petitions, he is thinking of others. He's thinking of the bigger picture, that he's part of God's people. What a model for wholesome prayer. May we be inspired by this prayer and use it as a model for ourselves. Quoting David, word for word. Amen. Amen.